Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, we are back today with this Christopher Ward. If y'all watched my review video, you'll know that I like these watches. The more I experience Christopher Ward, the more I appreciate them and enjoy them. And so, what I wanted to do in this video real quick is just to look at specifically the bracelet and this clasp, because I didn't go over that really in my review, but the bracelet and the clasp, which are fantastic, by the way. And then I want to talk about the quick adjust strap, or I'm sorry, the quick adjust clasp, but then the, um, man, what do you call those? I don't know. Pin, what are these pin bars? Quick adjust pin bars? Quick change pin bars? Mm, my mind is drawn a complete and total blank. So I have had my coffee today. I'm actually sipping on a decaf coffee now because I only allow myself to have one caffeinated coffee per day. But whatever these things are called, put it down in the comments. Tell me. I, I'm going to be like, you're going to mention it. And I'm going to go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. So check this out. This bracelet. You can see it's kind of an oyster style bracelet. Now, um, just to, for interest sake. I've got a couple of the crystal worlds here. You'll see these in the comparison video. But you'll notice that the Oyster style is not the same on all of their watches. So this is a C60 maybe. I don't know. This thing is sweet. But the bracelet links on this one, you see it's polished and they're not quite as wide. The center links aren't quite as wide as they are on the C65. So, you know, does it matter? No, I don't think they wear any differently. I think it may be an aesthetic choice. So you can pick whether you like that or not. And if you don't like the polish, then you could probably just brush it. Get some, uh, get some scotch bright pads and you can uh, do what you want to with that one and mod it. But this one is fully brushed. And let's look at the clasp real quick. So first of all, it is a milled clasp. It has two button pushers here. So it doesn't have the third fold over safety latch or anything like that. It's pretty sleek and pretty straightforward. So let's see if I can just kind of get in on it. And I don't even know what to compare it to, but let me give you like an overall thickness measurement. Okay, we're looking at 7.3, which is coincidentally probably about what the crown is too. Let's do that just for fun. Um, 6.9. Yeah. So the thickness of it really is not that bad. And um, here's where it gets cool. So the milled, of course, is going to be a little bit thicker. This, zoom in, this is the cool part. So that, my friends, is a quick adjust. And you can see I've got it as um, closed or short as possible right now. And you do need a little bit of a fingernail. So because of YouTube, right, I keep my fingers pretty trimmed when I film. And so, but you'll notice that if I push this little latch right here in, I can get several, it's got several adjust points on here. It probably gives me four or five millimeters of adjustment on the fly. See, there's about midway. And so for all of y'all who's, uh, wrist swell, which it's interesting. I don't know if women's wrists swell as much as men's. I have a buddy of mine whose wife's in the hobby and he says her wrists don't change like, like his do. And so, but my wrist, man, when I get up in the morning, I need to have this joker all the way out because my wrists are swollen in the morning. And then as I go on my day, I slowly, but surely can push that in. Oh, there's a notch. And notice you don't have to push that in to put, I'm sorry, you don't have to press the button, the adjust button, to be able to push it in. You can't pull it out, though, without that. So that's the mechanism. You push that in, and then you can pull it back out. And I know that when I get my thumb on that, it's hard to, it's hard to see me actually depressing that. But this little button right here will push over here to the right. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's pretty sweet because this clasp is really no thicker than it would be otherwise. Now, if y'all know about the Glide Lock system, Rolex, um, a bunch of other companies are using it. Janelle bracelets use it. A bunch of, you know, your Pagani designs and some other AliExpress variants try to use it. But it has a system where it doesn't have a button like this. It'll snap and open up and then you can slide it around. But in fact, you know, I've got a Janelle bracelet. One sec, we're going to pause this. I'll be right back. And I'm back. 
So I had a sip of my coffee too, by the way, in full disclosure. But this is the Geno Glide Lock. Geno, Geno, I don't know how you pronounce that, but this is the Geno Glide Lock bracelet. And this thing is sweet. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like this thing, it's hefty, but it is sweet. So this has the fold over clasp, just like kind of the Rolex does. Then you got to get up into that. There you go. It'll fold down. But this right here is the piece that I was talking about. When you want to adjust this, you just lift it up and you slide it in and you pop it down. Now, I think this bracelet might give you a little bit more range of adjustment. Don't quote me on that. I don't know from a millimeter's perspective how much room. See, that's all the way closed. How I don't know how much room this gives me, but I'm willing to bet this thing probably gives you a man five to seven mil you can see i'm sliding that quite a ways let's look at the clasp real quick and take a measurement let's see right if it goes from like there to there right oh man that's giving me like 12 mil. there's no way that that thing has 12 mils adjustment okay it might you can see where i'm just trying to measure where the pins might fall on the adjustment scale so that's a lot. Now, when I do that same thing with the Christopher Ward, right? You can see, let me just get the camera. I'm gonna push that down. And I'm gonna slide this out. Oops, gotta do it with my thumb. I can't do it with my forefinger. You can see here that if I can do it, all right, I'm not gonna be able to get it on camera. But you see, I've got probably about that much room of float. And well, it says nine mil, but there's no way that gives me nine mil. I'm thinking both of those measurements. I think that it's probably doesn't equate to the actual length of the bracelet, but let's get these closed and then compare the height. I never knew how difficult it was to work behind the camera when you're trying to do like hands-on stuff. So this overall measurement is 7.3 so it's actually not as thick as maybe i thought okay that's interesting 7.5 there's no way 7.0 that might be about right okay so one i think it depends on where you grab it but i will say that when let me zoom out when you put these kind of next to each other the glide lock definitely definitely wears thicker than the christopher and so that's just that's just me i don't know if it's because they're covering up some of the insert right where the fold over bars come in but um i will say that the the rolex style has a better taper to it this general bracelet is is less wide you can see that right there but anyway so you can see the two types of system now there's a third type of system and i've got some some other bracelets that do it where you flip it and then on this end down here instead of being just it just has a pop tab and it'll it's an extension it'll give you a two three mil maybe um so that does work i have those mostly on my chinese specials like my pagani design and i find that they are really really hard to pop out and pop back in and so I think that might loosen up over time, but they're definitely not as nice, as easy to use or as functional as this system or the glide line system. So that's my two cents on that. Now, let's also talk about real quick the quick release spring bar tools. Oh, that's what it's called. See, when I just let my brain do what it does, it'll come up with it. But they are starting to put let's see if i can zoom in on these they're starting to put quick release bars in bracelets now and so if you're familiar with it you used to have to get a spring bar tool this is an old-fashioned one and you had to get a spring bar tool and work those in oh my hands are shaking you get a spring bar tool and you'd work that into the lugs then they came out with these and you can just press that little tab and it'll pop in and out. And uh, even as good as I get, I'm pretty handy with my quick bar tool. You know, get a Bergeon, like a 6767 and you're going to be set. But I appreciate these quick release. 
um, not being out, not having to get my spring bar tool out. And then I'm always worried about nicking the insides of my lugs on my watches. So then I have to get out my little magnifying glass and my LED light and really get into my like watch maker mode to be able to mess with those. And uh, yeah, the quick release bars are pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this on camera real quick. I don't know how easy it's going to be, but you depress both sides. They come right off. Get this on the other side, depress, and it comes oh, right off. Now, here's a little trick or a tip. Let's see if I can get zoomed in. Nope, it's not going to let me without messing up the camera. Okay. The tip to get this back on, this is a little interesting. If you have longer nails, you will be benefited because it'll allow you to grip. Let me hold this up real quick. These things, these little tabs are not that big. Okay, you see them there? They're really not that big. They don't stand up off the case a whole lot. And I was worried about, because if you run your finger over top of them, you're like, oh man, that's a little sharp. That's a little weird. But when you're wearing it, you don't notice it. Oh, what am I wearing, by the way? Timex Waterberry little Explorer homage today. So there's that. But you don't feel it when it's on a wrist. And so I can appreciate that, even though it is rough to the touch. I suspect that eventually they're going to round off or smooth out those little nubs. Because if you look at a bracelet, let me zoom in on that, you will notice that that one is rounded off. See how nice that is? So I think in the in the evolution of bracelet design and improvement, that'll come. But for right now, we get what we get, and here you go. Now, here, let me zoom out, and let me show you the trick that I've learned to get this back on. So you gotta go ahead and get it pinched, um, get both tabs pinched and then bring the watch case to the bracelet. Don't try moving the bracelet. And I didn't get it there. Again, I'm working behind the camera. It is much easier to get off than it is on, especially because I got fat fingers. And so what you'll notice is, is that my fat fingers will press up against the case. But you can get it on. I've done it several times now. Just bring, pinch these down and bring this into set where it needs to be. You'll see some people, if they have the spring bar tools, like the pliers, not like a spring bar. Um, I don't have any of these next to me now, but the little tweezers will tell you to do the same thing. You use the tweezers and then you can pinch it in. So you could try using the tweezer on these if you want to. I have found the tweezers to be hot garbage. Now, granted, maybe that's my fault for buying a $20 version of it on eBay instead of spending $150 on the Bergeon tool. But I found it to be complete and utter garbage. So here is the strap that comes from Christopher Ward. You can buy this watch with either the bracelet or with the straps. And I bought it with the bracelet and then immediately ordered the strap because I was like, you know what? I want a different pairing right um and i kind of like the way that the leather looks so let's see if i can do this behind the camera it's a snug fit but yeah you'll see how quickly that goes in quick adjust spring bar tools or quick adjust spring bars have really revolutionized the ability to pair different watches with different straps and look at that i'm already on i did it twice just to double check myself but look how much that changes the aesthetic of the watch um, and they, whoever came up with this did a legit perfect pairing, in my opinion, that brown with that blue is just fantastic. And, uh, and I'll say that, so I have this other strap here. This looks very similar to the CW strap. This is the stock strap off of the Orient Bambino. I thought, well, this looks just like that. Let me put it on it. But you'll notice that the shades, and, and the camera is picking it up correctly, the shades of brown on these are just different enough where you need, in my opinion, the CW to get the visual effect that you want. When I put this one on it, it wasn't the same visual effect. It was muted. And if you want a muted effect, then, then maybe, you know, hey, see if you can get one of these orient straps or something like it. But... I think it's worth, I don't love paying $65 for a strap. I am frugal, y'all know this. I buy straps, I don't even buy the cheap straps 
at face value. Like I wait for them to go on sale. I've got a Barton incoming, but only because I got to buy one, get one. So technically I've got two Barton straps coming. So yeah, $65 on their website, but I will say it's the, you can see it there, Italian vintage oak leather, 22 mil for this watch. I think they make the same strap in a 20, but it's worth getting the Christopher Ward. So yeah, that's my take on that. Let me see the last thing I want to mention to you. This comes with the Christopher Ward sign buckle. The outside edges of this are smooth, and that's good. But when you run your thumb or finger on the inside of that, it is not, and it feels like it's going to cut you. So I'm going to end up taking that, sanding it down a little bit, take some of that bite off. But just so you know, so even Christopher Ward, you know, as good as they are, they have room for improvement in several areas. But anyway, that's it. We've got the quick adjust strap. We've got this. We compared it to the Jano with the slide lock and we're out as usual. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in this, pop them down in the comments. Until we talk again, please remember what really matters. And that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane, my friend.